Hello everybody and welcome to Scalable Scripts YouTube channel. In this video you will learn how to create a multilingual site using Angular as the frontend. If you need to translate your website, this is the right tutorial for you. We will do the translation implementation step by step and by using different examples. If you want to know how to build the backend in Python, check our video Python API translations. Let's start building our Angular app. To install Angular, we first need to install Angular CLI. Let's copy this line of code and paste it into our terminal. I will install it globally with sudo and then type enter. When the installation is done, clear the terminal and write ng new angular frontend. I will say yes for the angular routing and select CSS for the style sheets. When the code is generated, let's cd to Angular frontend and type ng-serv. The server will listen to the port 4200. When it's done, open the browser and type localhost 4200. This is our generated Angular app. Now I will add Bootstrap to this project. Let's go to bootstrapcdn.com and copy the CSS link. Open the project and go to index.html. Go to the head and paste the link we copied. If we go to the running app, now we'll see that the style has changed. That means Bootstrap is installed correctly. Let's add our first Angular component. First, let's go to app-component.html and remove all the HTML there. Now open the terminal and write ng-gc-nav, which is short for ng-generate-component-nav. We can see that the nav files are generated. Let's add the navigation to our app-component.html. Here, write the tag app-nav. All the Angular components must begin with the app prefix. If we open the browser, we will see that nav works. Now let's add this HTML for the languages dropdown. We can see now a simple dropdown to change the languages. I will change the class here to call minus 3 instead of call minus 2 to make the dropdown look better. Now it looks much better. Now let's change the language in the local storage. Let's add our change listener for our dropdown. First, I will create a function change lang with a lang parameter. Then I will console log the parameter. Now in our HTML file, let's add a change listener that will reference our change lang function and the parameter will be event.target.value. Event.target.value is a selected value for the dropdown. Open the browser now and change the drop-down. We'll see in the console that the language will change. Now let's save the lang value to the local storage and refresh the page. I suggest that you always refresh the page when changing the language because it will refresh all the calls. Now, when we change the language, it is stored in the local storage. We can see it in the application tab. The problem now is that the selected language is in Arabic and our dropdown stays in English. Let's fix this problem. Let's first create a variable lang. On ng, on init, write this.lang equals to local storage get item lang or en. This will get the current stored value of the language and if it doesn't find it, it will return a default value of en. Now let's go to the HTML and write to the English option. We will make this option selected when the lag is equals to en. This is the syntax for it. Let's copy the code and do the same for the other options.
Let's open the browser now and we will see that the option is selected based on the local storage value. Now we have to create the post component. To create the post component, open the terminal and write ng generate component post. We can see that the folder is created. Let's go now to the post component to appcomponent.html. We can see in the browser that the post works correctly. Now let's go to postcomponent.ts. We need now to send an HTTP request to our Python backend to get the post. To do that, we need to use the HTTP client from Angular. HTTP client is injected in the constructor. We injected the HTTP client now, but it won't work directly. We need to import the HTTP client model to appmodel.ts. Now let's send a GET request to our API. This .http.get, now we need to write the URL localhost 5000 posts. In the end, we need to subscribe to a HTTP request. I will just console log the result for now. Open the browser and type INSPECT. In the Network tab, you can see that the POST request is sent and we get the data correctly. But we still get the result in English. We need to change that. To use the POST in HTML, we need to create a POST variable. Let's create it and initialize it as an empty array. Then we need to set this variable as a result of our GET request. Let's declare the POST result as on any array and the warning won't show. Now go to postcomponent.html and remove all the HTML. Create div with a class container and inside the div let's create another div with a class row and mb-4. Now we need to loop our post inside this div with an ng4. The syntax is ng for with an asterisk equals let posts of posts. Now we need to show the post title and description. To do that we need to use the double curly bracket from Angular. Open the browser now and we can see that the data is shown correctly. In the assets folder I added the images for our posts. Let's use them now. Let's add another call, minus 3, for the image. Let's create the image tab now. The source attribute will be a string concatenation between the string assets slash images and post image. If you open the browser, we'll see that the images are gigantic. Let's add some styles to fix this. We will add an inline style with the width of 100%. Let's open the browser and we can see the images are displayed correctly. Let's change the code to call 4 and 8 to make the images a little bigger. Now looks better. Now we have to change the translation for the post. If we change the language now, we won't see a change in our posts. That's because we haven't sent our headers to the backend. Let's do that now. Let's create a variable called lang, which is equal to local storage get item lang. In case it is not set, we will return en. Now let's create a variable called headers, which is equal to HTTP headers. Inside that, we will add the accept language header, which is equal to the lang variable. Now let's add one more parameter to our get request which is headers equals to our headers. If we go to the browser, now we'll see that the posts are translated depending on the language but there is a problem now. For every request in our app, we have to create the headers and attach it with every request. That's not very scalable but there is a way to attach the headers for every request in Angular using interceptors. Let's do that now. Create a folder called interceptors. Then I will create a file called language interceptor.ts.
I will paste some code. This is what the default interceptor looks like. Let's get the current language from the local storage. Then we need to clone the request and set the headers there. This is the syntax for it. Now we need to add our interceptor to app.module.ts. Inside providers, I will add an object with parameters. Provide HTTP interceptors use class the interceptor that we created, multi true. Next, let's go to our post component.ts and remove all the headers that we added previously. We can see now that the translation works correctly. Even so, we remove the headers from post component.ts. Now we have to add the front end translations. For this project, I will use this package ngx translate. Let's install it now. Let's copy this code and paste it into our terminal. After the installation is done, go to app module.ts in the imports add translate module for out. Also, let's add the import. Write import translate module from ngx translate slash core. Scroll down now, we need to install also the ngx translate loader. Copy the code and paste it in the terminal. Now copy the HTTP loader factory and paste it after our imports. Let's add the imports now. Let's import first the HTTP client, copy these lines and paste them to our imports. Also, we need to copy the translate model options inside the for root method. In the end, in the providers at HTTP client. Now we are done with installation. Now let's create the translation files. In the assets directory, create a folder called i18n. Inside this folder, create en.json, de.json and er.json. Now inside postcomponent.html, let's add this HTML to reserve a room. This is how it looks like. Now we need to translate the byte text. Go to en.json and write a simple JSON object. The attribute will be the string that we want to translate and the value will be the translation. In English it's simple because it's the same word. In German the attribute will be the same but the value will be Kauf which is buy in German. Let's do the same for the Arabic translation. Now let's go to postcomponent.html and change by text to be translatable. The syntax is the code pipe and translate in the end. Open the browser now and change the language. We see the text doesn't change because we forgot to add something. Let's add it now. Go to app component and add the constructor because we need to add an injection. Inside the instructor, create a private translate service instance. Inside the constructor, write this translate service set default language to English. Then write this translate service use local storage get item lang or yen. Now every time we change the local storage value, the translate service will use that value and change our translations. We can see now that the byte text is changing correctly depending on the language. Now we have to translate the validation messages. I already added the translations that I will use in this project in the JSON files. I also changed the placeholder translation in the input field. Now we need to send a POST request each time we click the BUY button. Let's do that. Let's add a click listener which calls the BUY function with a POST parameter inside. 
let's create that function in the post component.ts and console log the post. Open the browser now and go to the console. Now, if you click the buy button, it will work correctly and console log the post. But we don't have the quantity. Let's add the quantity attribute as an array and use it as an ng module inside the input field along with the post ID. Now, for each post ID, we will have a different quantity value. Now, go to the buy function and console.log this quantity, open square brackets, and post the ID inside. We are getting an error that the engine model is not a property of input. That's because we haven't imported the forms module. Let's do that in the app module.ts. We don't have that error now. Now let's add the value for the input field and click the buy button. We see now that it shows the correct quantity even if we click another button, it will show the corresponding post quantity. Now we have all the necessary data, so let's send a post request. Let's create a new object called data that has one parameter quantity, which is the one that we console lock. And then remove the console locks. Now write this http dot post localhost 5000 slash post slash post ID that it needs a parameter which is the data that we created. In the end, we will subscribe and console log the result. We will add another case when an error happens. We will also console log. Now open the browser and test if the post works correctly. We can see we are receiving a congratulations message. It means that everything works fine. Now we need to translate those messages. Let's go to postcomponent.es and eject the translate service. Now go to the success message and replace it with this.translateService.get the parameter will be res.message and in the end add subscribe. Change the response to any to fix the ID errors. In the end we will get a message and we'll just alert that message. Open the browser and enter a quantity of 1. We will get a congratulations on your order message. The translation works fine. Let's do the same for the error message. Copy this code and paste it to the error message and change the res into r.error. Open the browser again, now, and let's insert a quantity greater than quantity left. We will get an error message in German, so the translation works fine. Let's change the language in Arabic and try it out. It works in Arabic also. Sometimes, when we change the language, we need to change the CSS too. We have the Arabic language, for example, where text is written from right to left. In this tutorial, I will show you a simple way to add styles without adding too much work. Go to appcomponents.ts. I will cut this code and create it as a variable so I can use it again. Now write document.document.element.lang equals to the lang variable. This will set the lang attribute in the HTML tag. We can see that is set on Arabic now. Now we need to go to styles.css to write the Arabic styles. When the HTML has a lang attribute of ER, we want the text align to be right. I will add just this simple style. But you get the idea now how to add more styles depending on the language. We see now on the browser that Arabic is aligned to the right and the other languages are aligned to the left. Thank you for watching our video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more upcoming programming tutorials. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. See you in the next video.